It's been two years since Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor were kidnapped in China. And yes, I used the word kidnapped on purpose. That's what has happened. But what is going on with them now? That's up in the air. Hi, I'm Brian Lilly, political columnist with the Toronto Sun. I want to bring in my colleague Warren Kinsella to talk about this because, Warren, there were reports out of China from Chinese uh, foreign affairs officials saying that the two Michaels had been tried already, indicted and tried. Canadian officials now say that's not true. Nothing's changed in their case. But isn't that part of the problem is that nothing's changed after two years? And, and part of the problem, too, is that we can't trust anything that the Chinese regime tells us and why the Trudeau government consistently trusts them and trusts their word on the two Michaels, as well as the vaccine development, is something that is beyond my comprehension. They have been, despite the fact that relations have deteriorated, you mentioned the vaccine development. That was a year and a half after the kidnapping of these two Canadians in retaliation for honoring an extradition warrant with her closest neighbor, and the Trudeau government wanted to, you know, work with China to f develop a COVID-19 vaccine. That always puzzled me. It made no sense to partner with an unreliable country, a country with a horrible human rights record, and just say, this is our way out of a pandemic. And, and get this, you know, one of the things that's most extraordinary about this all is the two scientists that we were partnering with under the National Research Council, Dr. Yu and Dr. Zhu, They've been trained in Canada. They've been educated in Canada with the support of Canadian taxpayers. And then they were part of something that now intelligence agencies tell us, the Thousand Talents Program, Thousand Talents, is actually an intelligence front run by the United Front Department in China. And basically what these Mandarin-speaking uh uh, scientists do is collect information about us and send it back to China, which is precisely what happened with the vaccine development program. Look, Canada has been blessed by bringing in researchers from around the world that uh, extend their education here uh, and then stay here rather than going back to their home country. In this case, it does look like we were we were played. It's part of the ongoing bad relationship with China. But you mentioned uh, you know, the human rights record. This is December 10th is the day that the United Nations marks the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, written by a Canadian, championed by Canada in 1948. And, and, and now um, it's also the day that we mark Michael Kovrig and Michael Spavor being held in, in captivity. Um, there is a, a, a sense of utter sadness that I have in hearing all the different ways that the Trudeau government has um, cozied up to China, including these documents that have now been uh, released that show when the Department of National Defense canceled uh, military exercises with China after the two Michaels were taken, that Global Affairs and their deputy minister wrote a letter saying, we're concerned about this, you know, be careful with these actions. We, we don't want to do that. The guy that wrote that letter was Ian Shugart, who's now the, the clerk of the Privy Council, the highest ranking bureaucrat in the country. And, and this is why this, this is important, you know, because I think it bears repeating or bears remembering. China is one of the most egregious abusers of human rights in the world. Like on the front page of the Globe and Mail this morning is a story about how they have basically placed the Muslim minority within their borders in a concentrate concentration camp type facility mm -hmm. for the production of wigs. They've targeted Tibet, the Tibetan minority. They use arbitrary detention, harassment. They control the internet, internet and they, they've been actually used death penalty to target dissent. This is the record of China. Why the Trudeau government felt that they were ever a worthwhile partner in vaccine development is beyond me. And, and how they're doing that in the face of how they've treated the two Michaels makes it even more incomprehensible. We, uh, we've got to acknowledge that past governments have tried to work with China. And I think if you go back to the 1990s and through the early 2000s, trying to work with China made sense. The hope was bring them into international agreements and they will change their ways. They've shown that they're not going to. Is it time for the West to disengage with China? Yeah, I believe so. I mean, take the word of Dr. Jameson. She was the woman who ever saw 
uh, most of our vaccine development protocols internationally. And she said, if you get into uh, bed contractually with China, they just steal your ideas. That's what they do. That's what they did with Dr. Yu and Dr. Zhu. The Canadian taxpayer helped fund their education at places like McGill. And then they both joined the Thousand Talents Program, an intelligent front, and returned to China. So, you know, you don't have to take my word for it. The experts, the intelligence community says, don't do deals with China. Why, why we are engaged in having military exercises with them and vaccine development is something that I think a lot of us don't understand. All right, Warren, good talking to you. As always, we'll chat again soon. Make sure that you drop us a note. Let us know what you think. Uh, you can comment below. You can post this to Facebook. You can drop us an email. Let us know. Should Canada start disengaging with China?